There's just one problem. The Big E's forward elevator was knocked out of commission at Santa Cruz and couldn't be repaired with the limited facilities available at New Caledonia. And the forward elevator is key to the system of launching and landing planes during a battle. Enterprise has three of these hydraulic elevators, forward, midships, and aft. Each elevator is 48 feet by 44 feet and capable of lifting 17,000 pounds. Planes are first brought up from the hangar using the rear elevators. Then they take off on their missions. When they return, they land over the rear of the carrier and are rolled forward. The forward elevator brings them below decks to be prepared for their next mission. With the forward elevator knocked out of action, the whole system falls apart. Bottom line, planes can take off from Enterprise, but there's no coming back. So Halsey's plan is to send some of Enterprise's squadrons to land at Henderson Field, which they will use as a temporary base during the battle. The handful of Enterprise planes will have to launch from her decks, bomb the enemy targets, then land on Guadalcanal to be serviced by Marine ground crews. November 13, 1942, day one in the Naval Battle of Guadalcanal. 8.22 a.m., the first planes head out on this risky mission. Nine Avengers and six Wildcats make ready to launch. They will head for Henderson Field and take out any Japanese ships or planes they encounter en route. It's a dangerous mission. With the enemy in full attack mode, there's no guarantee that Henderson Field will be in U.S. hands when the planes arrive. A little after 11 a.m., Enterprise's torpedo planes strike pay dirt. They are led by a lieutenant with a suitably grim name, Al Coffin. The Avengers are en route for Guadalcanal's airstrip. Suddenly, Japanese battleship EA comes into view. Despite being mauled by destroyer Laffey the night before, she's headed right for Henderson Field with her 14-inch guns. EA is a Congo-class battleship and displaces more than 36,000 tons with a crew of 1,300 men. In addition to her main battery of eight 14-inch guns, she's armed with 16 6-inch flak guns, eight 5-inch rifles, and as many as 118 machine guns. PA is a menacing sight on any battlefield. Coffin's torpedo planes immediately climb 4,500 feet higher into the clouds and out of sight. Their objective, split into two groups and maneuver into striking position to bury the Imperial battle wagon. Both groups will meet the warship head on, one from the port bow, the other from starboard. PAE will have nowhere to go. Any way she turns, she'll get a salvo of Enterprise's torpedoes. The crew of the Japanese battleship has no idea they're in the sights of Coffin's torpedoes. Two miles ahead, Coffin's Avengers burst out of the clouds in two groups, headed right for the bow of the massive vessel. At long range, EA unleashes flak guns, but her fire is divided between the two groups of American planes. Half a mile away, the Big E's flyers are only 150 feet off the water when they release their warheads. Coffin is in the lead of the four planes attacking the port bow just as EA cuts loose with an angry broadside from her 14-inch rifles. The Avengers pull up and run like hell for Henderson Field. Seconds later, EA is nailed by three torpedoes. She slows to a crawl and turns hard to starboard. Her rudder destroyed. She's helpless. Amazingly, three out of the eight American torpedoes have actually done their job. And that was quite a feat at that time because our torpedo planes were so slow. Now, your warfighter capability is a combination of both technology and, in this case, for flying your pilot skill. Well, back then, the technology wasn't all that good. The capabilities of the pilots would have to uh, play a, a much larger role than they do today.
two hours after the initial attack, PA is finished off by another round of Enterprise torpedo planes and is scuttled. For the first time in World War II, the Big E has just claimed a Japanese battleship. I think they were credited with sinking the first battleship. It's one